Probably the most well-known flatworm is the tapeworm, but there are actually over 20,000 species of these fascinating fellows. The group of flatworms, also known as the platyhelminthes, is typically split up into four different subgroups, Turbillaria, Cestoda, Trematoda, and Monogenia, though this is debated. Turbillaria are considered the free-living flatworms, which we'll explain later. Cestoda are usually called tapeworms. Trematoda are flukeworms, and monogenia, well, well, they're just monogenia. The free-living flatworms are flatworms that are able to live independently from other organisms, while most other flatworms are parasitic in nature, meaning they require a host organism, or host organisms, to survive and complete their life cycle. It's guessed that around 80% of flatworm species are parasitic. Flatworms have bilateral symmetry, and it's been suggested that they may be the oldest living ancestors to all bilaterally symmetric animals. That actually includes us, since we have bilateral symmetry. What this means is that if you cut a bilaterally symmetrical organism in half, both pieces would look the same except reverse. It's also called mirror symmetry. While they don't have a skeleton, a circulatory system, or a respiratory system, they do have a nervous system, meaning they have a brain and even eye-like receptors called ocelli. They have different methods of locomotion depending on the species. Some, which you may have guessed, use their muscles to move their bodies in a wave-like pattern. Others have tiny little feet on their undersides called cilia that they use to cruise along slime trails, kind of like snails. Of course, unlike snails, they don't have a shell, as they are all soft-bodied organisms. They're also not segmented, like some other worms we've previously discussed on this show. Flatworms live both terrestrially and in the water, and basically everywhere on Earth, even Antarctica. They can come in a variety of colors, and some will even appear translucent. Their size range also varies pretty drastically between the species. On average, one could say that they are typically less than an inch in length, but really, they can reach up to 50 feet. I mean, you've probably heard some tapeworm horror stories. They also typically only have one opening in their body that serves multiple purposes, meaning they use the same hole as both a means for taking in food and for excreting it after it has been digested. Here's to hoping they don't have taste buds. The free-living flatworms are mostly carnivorous and will eat something as small as a single-celled organism like a protozoan to something much larger than them like crabs and mollusks. The parasitic ones will feed off their hosts in many different ways. It really just depends on the relationship. Nearly all flatworms possess male and female reproductive organs, so they can usually reproduce with or without a partner. Some are even capable of regenerating from pieces of the original parent, but really a lot depends on how they live. It's likely that free-living flatworms typically produce asexually or without a partner, but a lot of the parasitic types need to have certain conditions met in order to continue on in their life cycle. Here's an example. Some species of tapeworms don't become sexually mature until they reach a higher body temperature, and this is achieved by ending up in a bird host after living in the cold-bodied fish that the bird will eat. Unless they make it to that point, they won't ever mature. Flatworms have even gone so far as to manipulating their hosts in order to end up where they need. That cold-bodied fish? Well, flatworms will just make it swim to warmer waters and have it eat a lot more, making it fat and slower, and thus an easier target so that the birds can consume both the fish and their uninvited guests. It's all pretty diabolical. They don't always win, though. Tapeworms eaten by grizzly bears in North America will die during the bear's hibernation. Mother Nature sure has some intuitive checks and balances. For more information on flatworms, check out the links in the description. Let us know in the comments if you have an animal to suggest. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Animal Fact Files.